Okay, today we're going to be doing problem 3.43 out of Engineering and Chemical Thermodynamics by Koretsky, the second edition. The problem reads, an ideal gas enters an adiabatic turbine with a molar flow rate of 10 moles per second. The inlet pressure is 10 bar and the temperature is 500 degrees Celsius. The gas exits at 1 bar. The ideal heat capacity is given by Cp over R is equal to 3.6 plus 0.5 times 10 to the negative 3t where T is in Kelvin, and part A asks for, at steady state, calculate the maximum power in kilowatts generated by the turbine, and part B asks for, if the isentropic efficiency is 80%, calculate the actual power delivered. So the first thing we're going to do is draw our system, and we have our adiabatic turbine, inlet stream, outlet stream and we're going to do an open system energy balance on the system so we have Q going in shaft work going in our inlet stream is going to be N dot which is the mole molar flow rate times the quantity of H hat 1 which is the enthalpy term plus V1 squared over 2 which is the kinetic energy term plus GZ1, which is the potential energy term, and the outlet stream is going to have the same quantity but with the outlet conditions. So N dot two times the quantity of H hat two plus V2 squared over two plus GZ2. And for this problem, it says the turbine is adiabatic, so we can say Q is zero and we're looking for power so what we're solving for is shaft work so we're gonna go ahead and rearrange this energy balance and for this problem it doesn't give us any velocities going in or out so we can assume that the velocity going in and out of the turbine is the same so these terms are going to cancel out and be zero and it doesn't mention any change in elevation so the potential energy we can assume is consistent between the two streams and these are both going to be zero as well and so what we're looking for in this problem is power so we're going to be solving for the work term so we have our open system energy balance equation de hat over det is equal to n dot one h hat one minus n dot two h hat two plus the shaft work and it's at steady state, so we know DE over DT is going to be zero. And we know N dot one is equal to N dot two, so we can combine these two terms. So we have zero is equal to N dot H hat one minus H hat two plus the shaft work. And we want to change this enthalpy term to change an enthalpy, which is H hat two minus H hat one. So we're just going to flip all the signs in this equation. Um, or flip it to the other side of the equality, however you want to think about it. So we have 0 is equal to n dot um, h hat 2 minus h hat 1 minus the shaft work. And we're going to change h hat 2 minus h hat 1 into the change in enthalpy, which we also know is equal to the integral from ti to tf of cp dt. And here's where we get stuck. So we have zero is equal to the integral, or n dot times the integral from ti to tf cp dt minus the shaft work. So we have an equation here that we can't solve because we have two unknowns, the shaft work, which we're trying to solve for, and the final temperature, which is the temperature of the outlet stream. So we have to go back and solve for the final temperature with an entropy balance. So for our entropy balance, we're going to have ds over dt universe is equal to ds over dt of the system plus ds over dt of the surroundings. So it's a steady state, so ds over dt of the universe is zero. And we're also looking for maximum work. So at the conditions where the maximum work is being achieved, ds over dt of the system is going to be zero. 
and that's proven in your book. So we're left with ds over dt of the surroundings is equal to zero. So ds over dt of the surroundings is also going to be equal to n dot sf minus n dot si plus q of the surroundings over t of the surroundings. And we've already said this process is adiabatic, so q is going to be zero. This whole term is going to be zero. And now we can change the sf minus si into change in s. So we have zero is equal to n dot change in s. And so we have zero is equal to n dot. And we know change in entropy is equal to the following. The integral from ti to tf of cp over t dt minus r ln pf over pi. And so plugging in what we're given for cp into our equation, we have zero is equal to r integral from ti to tf 3.6 over t plus 0.5 times 10 to the negative 3 dt minus r ln pf over pi. And so the r's cancel out because the other side is zero. And we can solve for this integral and go ahead and plug in our values for pf and pi. So we have zero is equal to 3.6 ln tf over ti plus 0.5 times 10 to the negative three tf minus ti and minus ln 1 over 100. And our value given for the inlet temperature is 500 degrees Celsius, which is equal to 773 Kelvin. And if you plug that in for your initial temp, you can solve for the final temperature. And it should come out to the outlet temperature being 231.6 Kelvin. And so now we can use this temperature in our open system energy balance equation. And so our open system energy balance equation, zero is equal to n dot times the integral from ti to tf cp dt minus the shaft work. And plugging in what we're given for cp into our integral, we have n dot times integral of ti tf 3.6 plus point five times 10 to the negative three t dt minus w s. And so doing the integral of this, we have zero is equal to n dot 3.6 tf minus ti plus 0.5 times 10 to the negative three tf squared minus ti squared and then we have minus the shaft work and so we now have the initial temperature and the final temperature so we can solve this equation for shaft work and what you should end up getting is ws is equal to 184.65 and remember that this value is the power which is what they're asking for because it's work per time and so part B asks us for the actual power generated if the efficiency is 80%. So we have our actual power is equal to efficiency times the maximum power possible. So we have our actual power is equal to 0.8 times 184.65. And your actual power value should be 147.72 kilowatts. And so we've solved for everything asked for by the problem.